Hello everyone, this is Surfboard, and today we are going to play the new game everyone's been waiting for in the Paradox community, Crusader Kings 3. We are going to be doing a observer-only game, and the reasons for that are there are two of them. One for your and myself's entertainment, and the second one is for the meta players out there, for you to understand how the AI reacts, how the AI behaves, throughout the updates. I am playing on launch day, being recorded on September 1st, 2020. And we're gonna see where this goes. We're gonna see how this reacts. Now, um, the, there's a bunch of start dates here. 867, two 867s with different little spheres. Three 867s, I'm just not looking. One with France, one with um, these guys, little, little mini boys over here in the Novgorod. The Watchmen up in the north of Scandinavia, we got 1066, these guys, and another two other 1066s, so there's two start dates really, and all these others. But for our observer only game, as, I, as far as I know, the only way you can observe is through the 1066 start date. So we're going to get started here, and we're going to see where this goes. Um, take take a good hard look at the start map here because this is what we got this is how it's gonna start and I think I'm going to overlay this with the base map at the end of the video and we'll see how things change all right so right off the bat here I've zoomed in on France and England and if you're playing England in 1066 take heed because you're getting invaded right off the bat by France and the Isles it seems as well as Norway so that, that that's going to be rough for you. So for, for these first few AI only games, at least I want to be focused around Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa, because that's sort of where the main powers are. And once um, places like the Steppe, India, and Sub-Saharan Africa um, start consolidating, that's when I'll start taking a look at them more um, more closely, and uh, that's t I'm talking about on a game by game basis, not like an update by update, waiting for them to get updated. That's not what I mean. I'm just talking about I won't stop, start talking about these guys till late game when obvious winners start making themselves known. So as far as um, types of governments are concerned here, there's um, about three main ones: feudal, clan, and tribal. But there's also um, like republic down here which is pretty interesting, like, like the, some of the Italian states, and which one is this? Cordoba. That's pretty interesting. And so, uh, starting off, Western Europe looks pretty sparse, especially the Holy Roman, um, the Holy Roman Empire, sorry. But if you um, left-click with control, you go and see all the, um, I think this is the duchy titles is what this is, yeah. All the duchy titles, and you can do this for all of them. And sometimes you can even, yeah, you can go even further into this. You can go into the county level, which is really really interesting so keep that in mind if you are observing yourself and you want to see what's up we got our first major development here William the Conqueror has come from France the Duchy of Normandy taken England and promptly um, seceded himself from France just like in real life pretty interesting stuff there another sort of major development here the Holy Roman Empire has annexed Bohemia as well as they are now at war with France and so is England and France are at war again. So we'll come back when we see where that goes. Seljuks also in the Middle East took a large swath of modern day Eastern Turkey. And so the Byzantine Empire might be on dire straits right at the start of 1066 here. In 1089, the Holy Roman Empire collapsing a little bit with um, Angria, most notably, and Tuscany all finding their own um, independence from the Holy Roman Empire. 1096 now, and if you look at the time counter there, I think that this, this game, I think has the fastest time counter of any of the the Paradox games that I, that I know of. But um, in other news, Provence and Piedmont have seceded from the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire continues to shrink, and Piedmont just gave way to Savoy. Um, over on the British Isles here, Scotland has invaded, I'd say, about a crisp third of Ireland, and we're going to see if they can hold on to it or not. Georgia down here has been able to get this. They started up here and 
the real Georgia, but somehow they got this land over here. Let's see, the county holder or the ruler, despot Michael of Georgia. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same country. I'm not exactly sure how he got it, but um, what is clear is the Byzantine Empire continues to shrink a little bit. But they did gain Sicily and Apulia, as well as um, a little bit of North Africa there. So they might be on the up and up, they might not be. They've gained, they've lost, they've got this little exclave over here, and do they have sea access? Yes they do, it appears they do, but maybe not for long, there's some fighting. Let's keep an eye on it. Looks like Cumania on the steppe has dissolved a little bit. Down south, the Seljuks, I don't know if they've already had this, but they've, I think they've gained this compared to the start. And as far as end date is concerned, I'm going to stop at uh, 1444, which is where EU4 starts. So we're already 100 years in, a little more than, a little less than 100 years in. So, yeah. It's like the Byzantines continue their con conquest, completing the annexation of Sicily, and they've expanded a little bit more into Italy. Over in Iberia, it is, looks like Castile has proven itself the the hegemon. Up in the British Isles of 1113, it doesn't look like England's having the best time. They've got a number of things going on. have got Wiltshire, Berkshire, Gwynedd, the last remnant of Wales, and this little exclave of Scotland all the way down here in, what was this province called? Bedenford and Huntingdon. Yeah. So we'll see if um, Scotland can hold on to that, or if they can even hold off against England in a, another war. Alright, so I just went to the main menu to make sure this um, this little campaign, this save, didn't have historical AI on, which I don't think exists in this game. But also, the end date is 1453 instead of um, 1444, or whenever I said I thought it was. But it's 1453, solidly. And now we've got um, Dublin fighting against Scotland. We'll see who comes out there. And it looks like um, the Holy Roman Emperor Tus Tuscany's got this now, and Hungary's got this little little salient right here. We'll keep an eye on it and make sure or see if um, the Holy Roman Empire continues to shrink or they gain back some of their strength. And Normandy is back under French control. It seems. It seems that um, it seems that Normandy has actually gotten its. Um, independence yeah next major development here it seems that uh, Scotland has I don't know if that's a formable nation I assume it is but well, it appears Scotland has formed Alba uh, at this point I'm not sure what Alba consists of as requirements in order to form but they've clearly done it so good for them good for them the first formable nation I believe I've seen you know what? I don't know what the hell just happened. I was Scotland again, and this happened, and now Croatia's here. A bit of a bug, maybe? I'm looking at the the realms. So this appears to be what the hell this is. Croatia somehow inherited the throne to France, and now France is Croatia, and I think Castile's going through a civil war or something. What the hell that's going on there? Something's up. And Scotland has um, sort of devolved again. The, the Isles of Back cannot now has the north up here. Gwynedd is... Um, it's got more territory. It's, it's definitely expanded. But Scotland still owns here. Back down south, the Byzantines have sort of had a little resurgence. They're now up here in the Ukraine, up around almost at Austria. They've got Sevastopol modern day Sevastopol, they've got up here Armenia, the Sinai, Phoenicia, um, Cyprus, the Cyrenes, and this bit of North Africa here. The They've got a little bit in um, Apulia and south, southern, the boot of Italy. But we might be seeing a resurgence of the Byzantines here. I noticed um, Jerusalem, the despotate of Jerusalem all the way up here. <laughs> It's, it's very interesting. I like how the thrones work in the just in the CK series in general. Like just some really small fashion can just do the right for dangling. Um, as far as marriage is concerned and 
come out massively on top. But Cro they've they, it was like Croatia has suffered some secessionist movements. And we'll see if they recover or not. The HRE has bounced back a little bit, taking the vast majority of Angria. And it looks like they're finishing, the, yeah, they're finishing the job right now. And Croatia has relinquished its hold on France, but not before the main players of Os Osatian France, the southern French, um, balkanized just a little bit, resulting in this, while the top half still remains in Philippe's hands, the king of France. They, England, for some reason, has this little exclave all the way down here. I don't know how long that's going to stay the case, you know. The Byzantines in 1169 really becoming the really undisputed hegemons of Eastern Europe provided the Seljuks don't make a resurgence. Like you've just seen, they've just become the, the hegemons of the, I'm forgetting the name, the Caucasus, really, taking almost the entirety of the Black Sea coast and making considerable gains in Italy and North Africa, all the way around. We're trying to reform the Eastern Roman Empire. All right, we're here in 1177, and it looks like the um, the Europeans at this point have sort of won the Crusades. The Holy Roman Empire annexing the um, Kingdom of Syria. What would you call it? It was the Kingdom of Syria a while ago, and now the Kingdom of Jerusalem is here under the House of Savoy. So congratulations to them. All right, 1181, Wales has formed. The um, these guys have formed the Kingdom of Wales, and Scotland and England. It looks like are going to have to come face to face with the hegemon of or the ruler of Ireland. Hungary has staked the claim in Ireland, and so has Norway, which is less weird than Hungary. England has more or less solidified its its borders, with the exceptions of Wales and Cornwall. So we'll see if England can um, continue this growth, or if they'll have some unprecedented some unprecedented um, lineage claim and go the way of France. Which would be pretty funny. In 1185, the Seljuks have dubbed themselves the Persian Empire. I don't know if that comes. From, I don't know if that's a formable nation or coming from a change of ideology. I am not sure, but let's see. They're Muslim, and let's see. I don't know where to find the uh, empire rank. All right, so they've they've formed an empire. The Seljuks, I guess, got the option to form an empire and the Persian one is what gets formed so that's really good that's um, something to keep in mind so we're here at 1196 and I don't know if this is how it is at the start but Aragon is a Sultanate I thought I'd point that out because Aragon is usually something we know of a of a Christian kingdom but no it appears they've been um, converted to this um, brand of Muslim of Islam Sunni yeah, interesting stuff. 1098, the Holy Roman Empire seems to be going through some troubles. As well, um, Sweden has been annexed or absorbed by Ruthenia. And I think it's going to be a, um, a big three-way conflict between Norway, Denmark, and Ruthenia of who becomes the hegemon of the far north. Ruthenia, if they come out on top, ooh, as I say that, Sweden has just become independent again. So we'll see. Um, it's definitely a very volatile region. I think Ruthenia stands as unequivocally the hegemon of the Slavs or the Eastern Europe. And we'll see if um, they in continue to incur themselves into Scandinavia or um, if Denmark, Sweden, Norway come out on top in order to repel them and take the region securely for themselves. In 1204, the Byzantines have kicked the Persians out of out of Europe it seems and the Persians don't even exist anymore they've become this this nation here Isfahan mm, for them the Byzantines also um, 
have bridged into Africa, and we'll see what they do there. I don't know what the what the technology is like here, but it'll be interesting to see the Byzantine Empire, the successor state of the Roman Empire, and probably in somebody with access to the technologies of the Middle Eastern and European world go up against the the what would you call them? I don't want cultures. I want governments, the clans down here. Oh, and it seems that I've just noticed this. It's like the feudalism has branched all the way down into sub-Saharan Africa, and we'll see what influences this has. I'm not sure that the the nations down here are going to have access to all of the technologies. I'm not sure, but it'll. it'll definitely be a thing to watch the successor state of the Roman Empire fight the the peoples of sub-Saharan Africa and see how they do they might they might do really well or really poorly so we'll have to we'll have to look at them keep an eye on them and see what happens looking at India now here it looks like Lohara has become the undisputed hegemon of the subcontinent and we'll see if they um, continue to expand or devolve into some succession crisis Everywhere else seems to be a bit up in the air. Um, Sub-Saharan Africa seems to be still quite quite small. The Holy Roman Empire has now taken a large chunk of modern-day Libya, while Castile and Aragon have decided to go at it. And up in the north, France has copped a little piece of Scotland here. The year 1241, the Persian Empire is back as well as the new formable nation Russia is here. England has England has destroyed Scotland and become the undisputed hegemon of the British Isles. And the Byzantine Empire has taken the entirety of the Black Sea coast and continues its conquest into Saharan and Sub-Saharan Africa. 1253, it seems that Islam is reconquisting the Reconquista down here. We'll see if they can complete that. It seems that Castile is on the back foot, but I'll keep watching and see if they stay that way. Now as far as Scandinavia is concerned in 1263, it appears Denmark controls the trade, but that is no means able to stay that way, or um, liable to stay that way, rather. Norway or Russia can come in at any time. Norway's got multiple bases around and Russia's got seemingly some enough territory to conduct campaigns so we'll see if um, Denmark even with their acquisition of the Swedish, ter Swedish territories are able to stay and Britannia has formed England has managed to form Britannia it's very cool very cool stuff in 1273 Egypt another formidable nation is here They've got um, stuff right here, down the Red Sea, on both sides of the Red Sea. As far as um, trade is concerned, it doesn't seem like this might have a thing to do with India. Like I know in Peritor Rome, there's a bit of a um, there's a bit of a canal or something right here, a river that connects the the Mediterranean Nile to the trade in the Far East, but that doesn't seem to be a thing. So this may or may not have no significance to the overall trading power of Egypt. So Britannia, with the exception of Leinster and the Lordship of Carmarthenshire, has completely taken the British Isles. Down in Hispania, Aragon, as long along with the um, its Islamic armies, have broken through the Pyrenees, and we'll see if Gascony, Toulouse, and Auvergne, I don't know how to pronounce that, will beat them back or continue to be subject to the invasion. We'll see where that goes. So in the year 1290, Britannia, aside from what the Faroe Islands and the Isle of Wight, has completely taken Britannia. They are suffering a little incursion from the Scottish, though. The Scottish in um, 
Is this like Kanat? Well, Kanat's like right here, but I don't know about the rest of this. I don't know what this little part is called. It's very close to Kanat, though. Let's see if um, the Scottish can pull it off and regain just a very sliver of their independence. Um, over here, Byzantium seems to be doing a pulling an Imperator Rome and just snaking their way north. But they're snaking their way in every direction, really. They've also been um, becoming a little bit thicker in the south here, as well as taking the Nile Delta, which is going to be very important economically, I believe. Jerusalem becoming a minor player now in the Middle East. I say major player in the Middle East, minor, minor player globally. Um, lastly, the Byzantines further solidify control on the southern bit of the Italian boot. 1305, Aquitaine has secured southern France right here. And Hampshire has declared its own independence. Scotland, not so much. But it seems the Holy Roman Empire is on the up and up, annexing the old Hungarian lands, while the Byzantines got the the Slavic lands, the Baltic Slavic lands here. Wallachia is a new player in the game. Doesn't seem like their days are too promising though, seeing how they're sandwiched between Byzantines, the Holy Roman Empire, and Russia. But we'll see where that goes. Maybe one of them, these will dramatically collapse in the next coming years. We'll have to see. Aragon looking like it's hurting a little bit, and 1311 being attacked by Castile, and um, with an independent, independence movement from Navarre, while Aquitaine has reversed Aragonese gains in southern France, while Barcelona and Tunis, both one Christian, one Islamic, now take the take the old former Aragonese lands. The great state of Britannia has fallen in 1316. This all sort of happened at once. Um, the Britannia was in a war against France, and then they just dissolved. Gwynedd is back. Scotland is back. Could not Dublin. Norway now has another hand in here. Um, France down in here. Now, we'll see if they come out with any territory on the British Isles. They seem to have kept the Isle of Wight here. But we'll see. There's there's definitely a lot of turbulence in here. And so we'll see how this shakes out once peace reigns in Britannia. 1321, Britannia has cleaned it up. It seems now that they've got to face Desmond some little... Desmond should be, like, over here, though, in Ireland. So we'll see... It seems that Scotland still controls this territory right here, the Duchy of Scotland. The Kingdom, the Empire of Britannia, it's, it's all very confusing, you know how feudalism is. It's gross. And uh, just like that, 1324 Wallachia is no more in, in the Balkans, being partitioned between Byzantium, or the Byzantine Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, and Russia. Now, um... The Byzantines looks like have almost completely taken a firm grasp of southern Italy, along with now an incursion in the north. We'll see if they can keep it. But look at this. They've completely taken the coast of Egypt and the Levant. There's not one province that doesn't belong to someone else, not touching the eastern Mediterranean here. The Byzantines are quite successful this time around. Over in India, the Deccan Empire has taken the most we've seen yet. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go around and um, turn these to the little little duchy system. Right there, this, we can see there are little um, the little clans within. Well, this is an empire, and so if we go to the kingdom level, and then we go to what is this? The I don't even know what what I would call this. But yeah, there's that. And we can do that for these guys too. Just so you can get a little taste of the the inner politics that's going around in these in these worlds here, you can see who who controls what. Um, a lot of little independence movements going on in um, the Holy Roman Empire. It seems that Russia has absorbed Denmark in some way, shape, or form. And yeah, yeah. So you can see how that worked. The Russians took Denmark. They absorbed them through some marriage or whatever and now they control this 
in the Holy Roman Empire, things are very messy. And you can sort of expect the same things throughout. It's just fun to see which nobles control what lands. You know what I'm saying? It seems like the Reconquista has Reconquista the Reconquista. It started with Castile doing good, and then there was a resurgence with um, Islamic Aragon going past the Pyrenees, but it seems all that's been fixed now, and Castile is on the up and up doing the original Reconquista this time alone. But we'll see if they can keep it, because on the Islamic, or the, um, the religious map mode, the Islamic presence is still strong in the region, so we'll see what ends up happening there. Elsewhere concerning the religious map mode, it seems the insular faith has taken precedence in um, the far west of Europe, while the while Iceland has taken to orthodoxy. I don't know if they started with that, but they're there now. And the Cathars are present in northern Germany, Lollards still being dotted around in in the British Isles. Out here in 1374, the Holy Roman Empire has lost the whole Carpathian region. With the exception of Bohemia here, they've lost it to um, the Kazakhs. Well, I don't know what these guys are. They're Hungarian Orthodox. Pretty cool. Oh, look at him. He looks menacing. What a guy. All right, we're at 1382, and we're gonna go and look at the, go and look at the little, let's see if I can find it here, the culture map, and see what's changed, see what's changed, if anything's, anything's a little out of place. Doesn't appear to be, nothing's weird. Like, we've got some Anglo-Saxons still in here, mainly English, Scots up in here, the Gaelic has really taken a hit. It's just like Scottish has taken taken the most out of um, the Gaelic sort of things, but Norse Norse only remains up here in Ireland. It seems I don't see it anywhere else. Got Dutch where it should be, or where it, it we expect it to be. More like Bulgarians over here, Greeks down in Cyrene. Which is cool, but nothing, nothing wild, nothing um, like that can happen in some maybe some of the other games like compared to Rome, where I've seen the Macedonian culture take the entirety of the um, near Middle East here in Asia Minor. That can happen. It's, it's kind of wild to see, like you you wouldn't expect it really. Religious developments in Hispania, we've got this. Waldensianism and taking Spain by storm that seems to be where they where they like to be over here we'll see if they um, we'll see if Waldensian um, continues to grow in Hispania or it's um, re, re um, put, put back in obscurity by the insulars or the Catholics in 1394, something I didn't notice until now, but the um, the Duke of Iceland is Hungarian, which is quite wild. I don't know how that happened. It might be when Hungary had these little pieces of the Isles up in Scotland, but it, like, you've got to really look at some things, some some of these things, you know, because you would never know that the the Duke of Iceland is an Hungarian. 1397, Iceland makes gains here. I think they've achieved achieved um, some sort of independence. Can we see from Britannia? I don't know how they did this. If they won in a war or not? I was I was looking on them pretty closely, and this seemed to have just happen. Maybe it was like a succession sort of thing. But on, in other news, bad news bad news for the Byzantines. The Ajaran type, um, I guess the noble of Ajaran, and um, this is, I'm not going to try to pronounce, and Thessaly, have all um, declared independence, and now they've got some little, little crisis to deal with right here. Also forgot to mention, these guys, the Shirovan, 
have made gains in Syria and Phoenicia, and we'll see if they can keep those. Obviously, the Byzantines are very preoccupied, so they might um, be able to take advantage of the situation and conquer even more territory, or then again, they they might not, or get into involved in a rebellion of their own. I just noticed Iceland taking more territory in Scotland away from Britannia. I don't know if um, formable nations can unform, but Iceland seems as though it poses a threat to Britannia in its status as an empire. The Holy Roman Empire now with considerably more territory in Barcelona and Andalusia, I believe, right down here. We're going to see if they can keep this or if it gets pushed back because now the um, the Islamic forces are now again resurgent in central Spain. It's, it's really been a tug of war back and forth all game. So we're going to see if by the time this ends in the 1450s, they've only got 50 years to see if um, there is going to be any decisive winner. But Okay, it looks like up here there is a war, um, and Iceland has achieved these gains through conquest, I w am forced to assume. So we'll see if um, this keeps going. Looks like England has made gains in the central England, while Iceland makes gains in Ireland and Scotland. But I'll bring you guys back once the peace conference is here. Alright, little anti-climatic peace now. Um, Iceland, it looks like Iceland did come out on top on that conflict, um, encircling this now exclave of Britannia here up in Scotland. But I don't think this is going to be the end for them. Um, the Byzantines um, slowly getting their stuff back. The Malagons now independent from Shiravan. Shirvan, yeah. And which will, this will leave um, them open to Byzantine invasion and perhaps even re-annexation. So the Byzantines could um, come back from all this from pre, pre-insurrection levels. We'll see if they can do that before the time ends. They only got another 40 years before the end date arrives. Major upset for the Christian Reconquistadors, Salahid, the this um, emirate right here. They have completely annexed Aquitaine through means of, I'd have to assume, um, diplomacy and some intermarriage, I reckon, because I didn't see a war for this. And now, even though it remains insular, the... wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, just a second, just a patty flipping minute. Alright, so the Salahid clan are actually Christians. I saw that, I saw it, didn't recognize it, immediately assumed that it was Islamic. That's not the case. They are, they are insular Christians. So, let's take a look at the religious map mode here. And it's a little bit, like, Ashar. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot going on right here. Some back here in southern France, some of these guys are Islamic down here. Some of these guys aren't, some of these guys aren't, like the Salahids are insular Christians, but it seems like, I don't know how this happened, I think maybe the Salahids were formally Islamic? I do not know. I'm, I'm going through the I'm going through the family tree now, seeing if there was ever a change. You can see some Swabians though, their, their grandparents used to be German, which is really interesting. But it seems like, I don't, I don't even know, there's, there's a lot of back and forth going on. We're here in 1453, Iceland has taken more and more of Britannia. Byzantine, the Byzantine Empire, might end up taking the vast majority of Italy just before the end of the game here. It's 1454. I think the, it's going to end any time now. And the Byzantines, at the same time, 
get a massive setback with a bunch of independence secession movements. And um, once we get the thing, we'll see who's who's on top, who hits the who hits the first place. It might be Shervin. All right, I'm just going back and check my settings, and the, the I have the game rules set to end in. 1453 so I've got it paused I let it run a little bit longer to 1456 and so now we're gonna check the we're gonna try to check the ledger and see who came out on top overall from 1066 to 1456 Alright, we're here at the main menu of July 27th, 1456, and this is what the world looks like right now. I might just be like a noob or something, but I could not find the ledger or any anything that would give me a ranking system to who would be the number one power in the world right now. It's definitely, I think, between the Byzantines and Shervin, but I'm going to let you guys sort of decide for yourself but yeah this is the end of the first the first observer only and if you enjoyed this i'd advise you to share it please share it and like favorite and subscribe and i'm gonna be back probably tomorrow this is this is really easy stuff to do uh, pretty easy so come back tomorrow for another video thank you goodbye